If you use autopilot regularly, you know about the nag. And there's a reason they call it a nag, because it's annoying. All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Tesla. So today I am talking about the autopilot nag. Now, about a month ago, there was a big hoopla in the media about a Tesla recall affecting like 2 million cars. Oh my God, it's a big deal. But as we all know, it's just a software update, so no big deal. Uh, but the big deal about that software update in particular was the changes made to the autopilot system because the NHTSA or the fun police, as I like to call them, because they took away the boombox and all that stuff, basically wanted some more features associated to driver attentiveness in the autopilot system. And some of the stuff was good. I do enjoy the screen display. It's a little bigger and more prominent, so it's easier to notice when you need to touch the uh, steering wheel and all that stuff. So that stuff good. The controversy comes with the autopilot nag. Now, some people say nothing's changed, it's the same as before, uh, and other people say it's way different, way more naggy. Uh, so I set out to test to see if there was a difference. Now, I'm not testing, obviously I can't test from before the update, but I wanted to see if there's a test because there was so much discrepancy in the community, whether some people that don't have nags for three minutes, some people it's every 30 seconds. There's a lot of discrepancy and I wanted to see, is there a trend or is there a pattern to all of this? Uh, so I set out to find out. So let's get right into it. Before I do though, please take a second and subscribe. And I'm also gonna need your help later on, more on that later. So I've been testing for a few weeks now, and basically what I would do is every time I was driving, different scenarios, different types of roads, I would take my stopwatch out and figure out how much time in between nags. And I've come up with a few trends. Uh, I'm going to show you now, but basically the difference is um, highway driving at high speeds, residential driving. I feel that there's a difference between those. So let's go ahead. I'm going to film a bit of it, uh, show you what I'm talking about, but definitely there is a difference between uh, highway driving as well as residential driving and uh, in terms of if you're driving on a four-lane divided highway or a two-lane undivided highway. So let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to start again, again on a residential road, uh, starting off Breaking for squirrels. So residential roads is basically the one that like I just don't get. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. Uh, I really can't find a consistency with small residential roads. So we're approaching 23 seconds. So 30 seconds right there. Now, earlier today, I went for a drive and I got 90 seconds with out and nag. Uh, this is on a residential roads. So I really can't predict this one. Now, when we move on to the highway and a few other things, uh, you'll see how I can, I can probably predict what's going to happen. So we're at 35 seconds now. So 49 seconds, so that's not bad. So 55 seconds. So we're approaching about 30 seconds here. Now, one thing that does come up is like when you're stopping at stop signs or stopping in general, uh, obviously it adds to your time, but does it kind of reset the clock? I don't know. So we're at 42 seconds. Make a turn here. So we're at 50 seconds, so there's, oh, 
So you saw the nag there. I didn't touch the wheel and went away. So we're at 58 seconds. Another turn here. That's interesting. Like the nag showed up right when it was supposed to, about 56 seconds. But then we were in the middle of the turn, so it went away. And now it hasn't asked me again. I did not touch the wheel. So at a minute 20. So unfortunately, so we are at like 90 seconds. And unfortunately, my autopilot is uh, at their destination I just put in. So we're at minute 40 and it still hasn't nagged me yet. And I think if I keep going, um, so I have to put input into the wheel, so I won't be able to go without messing up the clock. So our first lap was 30 seconds, then it went 56 seconds, then a minute 44, and that's only because we got to our destination. Uh, so that's interesting. So we're gonna move on to some highway and see how that affects, the speed affects the nag lengths. All right, so we are now on the highway. Uh, I switched the display to miles an hour from American friends to get a better understanding of the speed. Uh, so we are going 110 kilometers an hour, just under 70 miles per hour. Uh, so I already started the count. So you're gonna see probably in the, just about 100 or 70, I'll probably say it's going to be anywhere between 25, 30 seconds. So 25 now. Thirty seconds. So there it is. So there's the first one. So thirty-five seconds on the first one. So approaching eighteen seconds. Probably go get another one in about ten seconds. Should be 35 seconds, there it is. So 33 seconds on that one. So I'll probably do another one. So 15 seconds. Probably get one right about now, 25 seconds. There it is. So now I'm gonna up my speed to around 85 miles per hour, and it's gonna be 125 kilometers per hour. Uh, so I'm just gonna reset the clock because I actually, so this is new. Uh, I don't want my speed adjusting to mess up the clock. So we're at five seconds on this timer. So we're at nine seconds. So just over 10 seconds going this fast. Let's see if there's consistency to that. So actually going 137 kilometers per hour, which is quite fast. So 17 seconds. I would say there's another one probably in the next five seconds. There it is. So I'm gonna break the speed down to, let's say, 75 miles per hour. It's about 125 kilometers per hour. Let's reset the clock. So I'm probably gonna say around 20, 25 seconds at this, at this speed. So we're at 20 seconds. We are going 121 kilometers per hour. It's uh, 21 seconds hitting now. So 28 seconds. So maintain the speed at 75 miles per hour, 121 kilometers an hour. Uh, 
16 seconds. I would say probably soon, next 10 seconds or so, we'll get another one. So right about now. So I would say another, let's do one more. 15 seconds. Twenty-seven seconds, right about now. There you go. So you can see we start off what uh, going a hundred. It was thirty-three, thirty-five seconds. Then I boosted it up to eighty-five miles per hour, and it was eighteen seconds lap times. And then back down to about seventy-five miles per hour, one hundred twenty kilometers per hour. We're just a little less than what it was at seventy. So we got an extra three, four seconds out of it. Uh, so yeah, definitely on the highway. That's the one thing I noticed is that is very much speed dependent. Now I don't know. I'm definitely not getting, as you can see, the minute, minute and a half, or three minutes that some people are getting. So I don't know how you get those. Uh, so I'm going to show you one more thing of uh, different types of highways, different types of roads will affect the results. Because right, right now we're on uh, two lane highway, divided highway. So uh, a little safer, I guess, in terms of autopilot. So we are now on a undivided highway. It's about the uh, speed limit is 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. It's obviously undivided, so a little less safe in terms of driving an autopilot. So let's see if it makes a difference. So already we are at 14 seconds. So I bet you the next one is also going to be in the 14, 15 seconds. So 12 seconds. So we'll do one more of these. Eleven seconds. So we are getting eleven seconds. This is ridiculous. So let's see what we do if we drop down the speed. So forty-five miles per hour or 74 kilometers an hour. So it's going to reset the lap. So let's see if we get more than 12 seconds. So there's 14 seconds. So coming up on 10 seconds again. So 13 seconds again. So not much difference. Let's try to slow down a little more, see if there's a threshold we have to meet. So I'm down to 40 miles per hour, going 64 kilometers an hour. Let's reset the clock. So we're at 10 seconds now. So 14 seconds, which is kind of what we've been getting. Fourteen seconds again. So let's re slow down a little one more. So reset the lap time. So we're now under sixty. Maybe that's the threshold we have to meet. Because when I did this yesterday, I got a very different speed going a little slower. So we're at nine seconds. So at 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers an hour, same 14 seconds. So 14 seconds again. So I'm almost saying, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off autopilot and see if that makes a difference and reset this. So 40, I'm going to go 40 miles per hour, or 64 kilometers. I'm at 13 seconds, 14. So 19 seconds.
so 14 seconds. So not really much of a difference. Uh, we're just going to turn here. So the country road, if I ever saw one. So we're at 27 seconds. Thirty-three seconds. So we jumped up to forty seconds on this road alone. We're at forty-nine seconds. Speed is uh, twenty-five, one twenty-eight miles an hour, or forty-three kilometers an hour. Are we up to a minute? So we're kind of back on to more of a, uh, so this road here is going to be more of a, a quicker road, a little highway, if you will. So we're at a minute 24. We're going to turn and then it's going to increase the speed. So we're back on a more uh, undivided highway here. So we're going 41 miles an hour, 64 kilometers an hour. Speed limit is going to increase to so now we're back down to 20. So speed is now up to 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. We are going about 69, 70 now. So now we're back to down, we're back now to 14 seconds. So you can see as depending on what type of road we're on and the speed, these lap times are either getting shorter or longer. So 12 seconds. So five seconds. So again, 12 seconds. So what I'm going to do, no one behind me, so I'm going to slow way down. It's 25. So we're going 25 miles an hour. Uh, well, that's what I said it at. We're now cruising at 26 miles an hour, 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, so we're just passing 13 seconds. So had I been going normal speed, I would have got a nag by now. But I'm not. So we're down at 18 seconds, 20 seconds. There you go. So there it is. Uh, so I'll just get past the stop sign and see. Uh, so the stop sign should increase our time. So 20 seconds, let's do one more, just make sure to see what we're at here without a stop sign. So 14 seconds there. We're back up to 66, that's why. Uh, so let's bring it down 25 miles an hour, give myself a lap. So we're just 42, 40 kilometers an hour, 25 miles per hour. So I should be getting out if we weren't that fast. So again, just bring down the speed. Now it's get less in between. So we're at 20 seconds. So at 25 seconds. So there you go. So obviously if I was going, you know, I'm able to go this fast on a major highway without getting nags every 15 seconds. But you put this on uh, undivided highway, single lane highway, and you get nags every 12 seconds. All right, so we are back, and I wanted to cover the highway first because that was the most obvious. Clearly, as you can see, the faster you go, the less time you have in between nags. I was going about 130, and I was getting like 25 seconds nags. And then if you slow it down, I was getting about 30 seconds. So not much of a difference, but you can see there was a difference. And on the highway, I'm not getting any more faster, any longer than 30 seconds. I don't know what everyone else is getting, but I'm for my car, 30 seconds, and that's it. 
so then we move on to a, so that was a four lane divided highway, which obviously a little safer than a two lane undivided highway. So then I did that and same thing. That was like, if I was going fast over 80 kilometers an hour, 12, 13 seconds, which is ridiculously quick. I've never seen that before, but 12, 13 seconds to next. So then once I slowed down to under, let's well, say 40 or 50 kilometers an hour, I would get back up to like 25, 20, 30 seconds. So obviously, so it factors in speed as well as the type of road, because in that also segment of going on the two lane undivided highway, there was a section where I kind of went into a very uh, quiet, almost like a driveway, and I got back up to 30, 40 seconds. So definitely the type of road matters as well as your speed. Now, the reason I think people are getting over 30 or 90 seconds or a minute or three, three minutes is in residential driving. And the reason for that is, uh, if you can see, remember from my drive on the street is I was driving along and a nag popped up, but the car about to make, was about to make a turn and the nag canceled it. So for whatever reason, either uh, turns or stops, cancels out nags and your timer is reset, I do believe. Uh, obviously, there's no way to recreate that. There was good timing, but you can see that it was there and it went away. And I find that when I'm driving with a lot of turns, a lot of stop signs, that that's when I'm getting those long time in between nags. So that could be it. So other factors to consider, it is not driver profile related. I switched driver profiles and I was getting the same results as well as uh, the other factors could be this is a 2023 non-USS car with, I don't think USS would factor in because that's obviously parking sensors, but also doesn't have radar. So that could be it as well. Maybe radar cars are getting longer uh, nags. And the other thing to consider is this is a 2023, so brand new car. Uh, my theory is that maybe, just maybe, there's some uh, autopilot history that this maybe system keeps track of. Uh, I remember back a while back when the, before this NHTSA nonsense started, Elon was teasing us with the fact that the nag might be removed. And maybe that would be based on if you like to have 10,000 miles on autopilot and you're good, and they would be a little more lenient with the nags. What I need you guys to do though, is leave a comment below uh, with some information. Let me know what you're driving. Are you driving on the highway? Are you driving residential? How long are your nags? And let's see if I can find a pattern and figure out exactly when and where you're gonna get nags. So let's do it. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos, which I release about every week or so. Uh, once you subscribe, you'll help me out, you'll help yourself out because I will be able to get better content out towards you. Uh, so again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. In the meantime, drive safe and drive electric. All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from... All right, welcome back to the channel. A software update, really. Uh, my iPhone, oh, the screen, um, what it says in the display was a little better, I find, in terms of that, you can catch your eye better. So I found that was better. Yeah. Uh, the reason there's... Cons uh, within the community is that there's a lot of discrepancy. Uh, there's just... Uh, no consistency with anyone's statements. So I would get the stopwatch out and basically time to for a few weeks now. And basically every time I drove, I would basically take out the stopwatch and time the t difference. Take my stopwatch out and basically time the diff time difference. Go and do that. I'm gonna mix, test out some residential, some highway driving. And before I do though, please take a second and subscribe.